The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour, and this is Monday, the 29th of July. We're looking at the Dow up 37 at 40,626. What a move on Friday. So I'd say to subscribers, after a move like that, you do expect some kind of a breather. There was uh, at least a temporary one uh, the last hour on Friday where there's a bit of a give back. That actually works as almost like a daily thing rather than just intraday. But I still expect that there should be some kind of a pullback. Um, and we've got that. We've, we've got a pullback where the futures were up about 170 points. And then we went down sharply soon after the open. And now we've come back to 30, up 34. So this is – let me go, go through this because this is the end of the month going into the beginning of the month this week. So the nine-period exponential moving average, let me go to this chart right here. Look, the, da the Dow, just a very simple technique. Let's go to the Dow, INDU, there it is. Shows that even though there was a sharp dip earlier in the week, that sharp move up on Friday said that the nine-period moving average, this green line, is way above the 14. That's really important. That's good action. The fact that you're starting to get choppy says, be careful because we've got a lot of earnings and I think there's going to be a very mixed Earnings report coming out this week, you've got, at least for the top four, you've got Apple and Amazon, you've got Microsoft and Meta. So that's going to be very important, uh, certainly uh, as it relates to some of the key indices. But in the meantime, this is the daily chart of the Dow, and that is really positive. Look at the S&P. The S&P right now is up uh, 21 at uh, 54.81. It did go pink. Nine-period moving average for the first time since May went from green underneath the 14-period moving average to go pink. And that says you, you've you got asymmetry here. You've got the Dow strong. You've got the S&P weak just in terms of the 914, uh, Chapman Wave 914 tool. Let's go to the QQQ. That's even worse. Look how deep that pullback was. It's up 361 today, 466.57. But... Look how deeply that nine-period moving average went under the 14-period moving average. And that's it's at right now, it's at 466.66. All of the weekly charts are still very strong. But this is the daily chart. The daily chart has gone to a sell mode. And it doesn't mean to say that, oh, my God, sell mode. Now we're going down. It means the designation right now is that you've been upgraded from a sell signal to Friday's close where it went to a sell mode. And that's just the... It just gives you a designation to tell you where you are right now. Looking out, you have to do other things. So in the meantime, I'm thinking that there's some shakiness coming into the QQQ this week. The IWM, still okay. It's up 70 cents, up 66 cents right now, at 224.85. Um, uh, and look how nice this is. Look how strong it is. But when you get this choppiness, you've got to be prepared to say, well, at least the nine-period moving average of 220.34 could be tested. And here we are at 224.79. I should mention that for subscribers, we are long from way back. Uh, but we also have added to long positions, taken some profits, and um, just treated the, the, the new positions as trades. So within that context, you're looking at um, the rotation that says Dow and S&P on mix, the Dow's strong, the S&P's weak. The QQQ and the IWM, this is the NASDAQ 100, is weak. That index, the QQQ, but the IWM is showing strength. So this is what we've got. A bifurcated market is much clearer now. And I think over the, the week, you'll see that there's going to be a lot of uh, volatility based on the earnings reports that are coming out. Um, and as a, as a result, I'm just saying that we, we've we had those huge gains. Now I think you've got to look at more kind of a digestive phase at this particular point. Let's get out of this and let's go to right here. Um, now I want to go to the XLK. 
and that's the S&P Select Sp uh, Spider Tech Fund. Uh, not doing all that great. It made a high peak G top right there, the 237. Whoops, let me give you the exact figure. 238.14 on the 11th of July. We, we've gone down to the 210s, and now we're at 217. Nice bounce, but it's only a bounce, and I think there's a digestive phase. And what I had said is, I might be completely wrong, but everything about this peak C has the characteristic of a D. That's just based on my experience, and that doesn't mean to say that it is a D, it's a C. And that just implies that there should be no break by even one penny of the low that was made, a 192.08 and 192.04. So 192.04 should not be taken out in this digestive phase. <laughs> we'll see, because that'll be unusual to make an all-time high at a peak C in a weekly chart and then take out your starting point for the move up. And I, I most importantly, this could become a chapter very unusual. It's called an unconventional flat-based restart by saying that every time after you made that peak D, every pullback, pull back, and it went, went underneath the trough of, of, of that made peak D of 197.07, and we went even lower, and that's unusual. And that just says if it's a Chapman flat base restart, you are actually coming back down to the 190 level. So let's just go one step at a time. In the meantime, the XLK is in a digestive mode, cell mode in the daily uh, chart, not even yet a sell signal. It's very close, but it hasn't made it a sell signal in the weekly chart. Monthly chart, fantastic. We're right up to this long-term trend line. Um, and now it says, and leg D, we'll see if next month is a lower high to make a peak D. We don't know yet. All right, let's go to gold. A gold right now is up a little bit. It's up nine at uh, 2437. <clears throat> uh, you can see that the nine period moving average today so far, days young, I have to wait for the close, but so far it flipped to an S, meaning the nine period moving average went below the 14 period moving average. That's usually a tip off to say, be careful. But the weekly chart says, hey, what do you want? What do you, oh, you had, the, it gets smoothed out. This is a continuous contract. So I always have to renotate or at least raise them up. There you are. So that made it a leg F going to a peak F in the weekly chart. I believe it's an F. Could be a restart, but I'm calling it an F for now. And it could be a digestive phase. And that's what I think uh, gold is having a digestive phase. Silver had a much weaker pull uh, uh, action and a much weaker chart pattern. Peak D cell mode uh, was in a cell mode. It had another one going all the way to the 200 period moving average of 27.45 was just above it and right now it's at 28.03 struggling a little bit and what's very interesting is that the weekly chart has a look of a A to B equals C to D remember that's the lightning bolt pattern that everyone talks about here in TFNN and um, I call it a one to one expansion uh, based on the dreaded H formation that failed that's this peak A minus that's right here I better put it in just so you know what I'm talking about it looks like an H, dreaded H, A minus. And that says you could get a, the distance from that peak A to the bottom, that trough three weeks before, could go to the downside. And that says just be careful because 2650 could be in the cards for the silver uh, contract. Uh, but so far, it's trying to hold quite nicely above the 200. I'll be right back. Now it's down, down 40, down 50. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, so, folks, let me just say that in the, in the Chan Wei methodology, one of the things you look for is to try identify the lowest low bar and then count each successively higher peak. Alphabetize them on the way up, uh, A, up, uppercase on the way up, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. So it's seven uh, letters. It was originally called the seven waveform. But at D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. Your objective is to get a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode that should take you to at least a D. Well, what we got was uh, in the E-mini, the five-minute chart went to a peak D at about nine o'clock. That was a peak D in the 10-minute chart the one-minute chart had made a peak F, and then we started tumbling down. What I typed into the den was to say uh, we were down at the, around about the, I uh, hmm, can't remember now, I think it was 55, 18 level, 16, yeah, 18 level. And I said 50, 55, 20, uh, 55, 28 to 55, 32 should be resistance, and 55, 20 would be support. Well, lo and behold, we're just above that. We went to that peak F, then we came tumbling down, and uh, we went to the uh, 5520 level. Then, right through 5520 was the one minute, right there, the one minute 200 period moving average support. Went right through, it did almost more than a one to one to the downside. Now we've got a peak C1, C2 that acts like a D um, in the one minute chart, and just a bounce to peak B. After that peak D. So this is a very interesting, look how sharp we, we, we fell. Now, one of the things that I look at, one of the techniques I use is the speed with which a, a price comes down. If it has a huge decline, and now a huge decline is just a visual thing. A huge decline would be to take out a left side low of importance. And it did that the 4 p.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, 55.05 level was taken out. We were right through it. But look at that 200 period moving average, how it's become a very important intrinsic support so far today uh, in the 10-minute E-mini chart. This is the S&P mini. And now look at the resistance level at 55.14. Uh, yes, 55.14 in the 200-period moving average, and it's wiggling like a sine wave up and down and up and around that area. So let's watch it closely. 55.17 going above that says, hey, that is good action, but you need to be above it for about Three or four, three or four minutes in the one-minute chart. All right. With that said, 
I'm just saying 5,500 is going to be a really important support today. I think that uh, we might have made at least a short-term top going into Tuesday. Uh, we'll see if that's going to be the case. Now, General Motors peaked deep. <laughs> what did I just say? These way other things can happen. Well, it goes just over 50, and now it's down at 43. Look at that peak D in the weekly chart, leg B in the monthly chart. Hey, wait a minute. Ford, what a peak D that is. Just under 15, and now it's at 11. That's four points decline. And a peak D in the, in the weekly chart. These Ds can be deathly, D for deathly. But they can also be instant restarts, which is really incredible for the upside action. So just watch it. Your objective is to get to the D and then reassess or assess and see what we what happens very uh, often. Um, within three bars, if there is another higher high, that is a very good action. All right. So with that said, I had a couple of questions. I think, oh, what did I just do over there? Good grief. All right, give me a second. I just need to get this back in order. Nope, I don't think I can. Not if it's, okay, I'll have to do something else. All right, in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is um, Bitcoin, very strong move up, and it's gone to a leg D. Remember, we we're talking about these D, so this is a daily, it's gone to a D, but it's underneath the previous high. That was a peak C minus right there uh, at 74,000. Uh, on the 5th of June, 73,690. So today's high is 70,825. Excellent move. We've been talking about this all week, that I got a really good signal. And unfortunately, I, said I didn't do anything with it for subscribers. Uh, yeah, it can't be everywhere, but I was looking at it. And now we're bumping into this inside track repellent zone. So let me just do this real quickly. Make this red right here or pink. I like to make it pink. Pink, make this green, new, new, right there, new, make that green. And look what we've got. We've got Chamber Wave Inside Track. All these techniques are techniques that developed over the years. Look at that. Chamber Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. Will Bitcoin be able to get above, right there, above 72,000 so that it could tackle the left side high of the week of the 7th of June at 73,895. So, so far, all of this, look, the MACD is good, the retro strength, the gray line there is, is good. Uh, stochastics at 81%, that's good, not as good as it was, but it's still good, and the on balance volume is good. So, this says that there should be very strong support. Uh, 66,810 is the is the nine period exponential moving average. I'm going to put it a little higher than that. I'm going to say on the very short term, 68,000 to 67,900 should be very important support. The higher it goes in this leg D, the better it is. All right, let me get out of that over there. Uh, did I do this? Uh, just check. Uh, Tesla, did I do anything with Tesla? I'm always asked about Tesla. Yeah, Tesla. Uh, he has a resistance line. It's trying to rally. It's got a pink nine-period moving average. I think this is just a bounce. I think Tesla's in a consolidation phase, even though it's gone to a peak C in the weekly chart, which says you should get to a D. But I'm treating this like the last C failed. So this one could also fail. I'm just saying that I think Tesla is under a lot of pressure right now. And if you're looking at ads, you'll see that automobile companies are starting to give really good ads um, for sales. Uh, I know I'm getting emails all the time. So I suspect that there's a lot of pressure for sales. Uh, can we go over Mara? Well, we're looking at Bitcoin. So let's go to Mara. Mara is, uh, I can never remember the full name. Mara is, oh, I've typed it in so many times. Marathon Digital. So this is in the, bit, don't tell me I've lost all my data here. It doesn't matter. Look, so this is your starting point. So that went to peak, I believe, A, B. I believe that's a D. Anyway, in the 80. 80 level, and then it comes tumbling down. It goes all the way to was that something like two or three? Yeah, three dollars and eleven cents. So this becomes peak A, peak B, peak C, D, E, and now it's digesting the gains. Yeah, this is in a consolidation phase. So unlike GBTC, which is the Bitcoin GBTC, that's the Bitcoin futures, which I had said should go to a D based on the monthly chart. And it's testing resistance in the in the weekly chart. This Bitcoin Investment Trust looks quite a lot like the Bitcoin, except lately there's uh, the 
price movement has got the chart pattern a little bit different. Look, this is now in a leg E. In the daily chart, trying to tackle, that's a good sign that it's trying to tackle the left side high, just under 64. It's trading at 60.97 right now. So going back to Mara, I'm just going to say that I've typed it into the wrong place. Let's put it over here. Mara, M-A-R-A, -A, Marathon. Uh, Marathon is just stuck in a range. It's not going anywhere as far as I can see. A, B, C, peak D in the, the latest iteration of the weekly chart. So here's your A, A, B, C. No, that's an E, D and an E. Yeah, it's had a very nice move to the upside, but it's taken a lot of time to get to an E and now it's a peak E. It's just stalling. I'm, I'm saying, I don't think it's going to fail uh, by much. Uh, 20, 20, 19.50 is your support level. I'll be back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Just to, just to review, I, I might be wrong in this, but everything emotionally 
as well as the chart formations that I'm looking at suggest that on a very short term basis, the rally that we just saw today extending the massive move up from Friday, certainly in certain areas like the Dow, I think we've got ourselves a little top right now. Just uh, today's high, we might not see this high again for a couple of days, at least a few days. That's just the way I'm looking at it. It could be wrong. And the other thing I wanted to do is this uh, gold chart, I'm, I'm a little surprised with my the Chapman waivers out there, there's so many, that no one sent to me uh, sent uh, an update on the, my GDX chart. I did see this over the weekend, didn't have a chance. Well, I forgot because I moved on to other things to renotate it. But look, let's just take these away for now. Your objective in the Chapman wave is just to count every single peak, and it's not so hard, from the low. That's, I've circled this. This trough D in the arch formation that turned around to become a very positive U-shaped pattern or a W. Um, that's your peak A right there. So let me just do this in numbers. The low of the 17th of June was 32.84. The high three days, three sessions later, two sessions later was 34.79. Then it pulls back, and then the next high is a little bit lower. It's 34.58. But wait a minute. 34.58 says that if you're supposed to notate, every, I, I actually don't do this always because it just gets messy, but I, I visually in my mind I've got it. So that becomes an A. And if this high right here is slightly higher, then that becomes a B. And it is, it's 5460. So there's your B. And you might not have seen it, but look how important it is because then you go B, C, and instead of the C that I had here, you get your D. And now you've gone to a sell signal in the daily chart of the gold, of the GDX, the gold miners. It's in leg D in the weekly chart, a peak F in the weekly chart. So that just says we can have a little bit longer timeout in the GDX. You don't have to break down. It just says, yes, your peak D, you've had your dreaded H. This is that gray A failure peak. It looks like an inverted V, but it's got the point of going from a low to a bounce and then taking out that low in this particular pattern. It's a pattern that we talk about all the time, Chapman Wave methodology. And that is the, right here, the dreaded H. Looks like an H, right? Comes down, bounces. Instead of going to um, an, a B, it goes to peak A, and then fails and takes out the left side low. That be could become a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. That makes the 3561 level pretty important support, and that's the pattern. That's what we look at, straight line up, straight line da down, cup formation or arch formation or a mix of one and two or one and three. This is one and three. All right, so with that said, um, you've got your U-shaped pattern, which says the high that was made at 3787. Uh, the week of, the week of, and the, this is the GDX contract. I want to take a little time on this because a lot of people have asked me about the gold. And I said, gold's holding well. Um, silver is not as uh, acting as well. We've got our gold, our silver stock, which is, I don't know how it's done it, but it's held extremely well. Two positions, actually. We're taking a little bit off. But I suspect that it's going to get a good test this week of strength. So 37.87 was the high the week of the 24th of May in the GDX weekly chart. Look at the technicals, how strong they were. And when it went to the higher, higher high, the week of the 19th of July at 39.41, the MACD was good, not as good as it was. The stochastic was much lower. The on-balance volume was much lower. It's just suggesting there's a little bit more of a timeout going on in the GDX. Okay, I wanted to do that. I also mentioned I have to wait for Wednesday where the, where the uh, monthly chart closes. So far, it's a green inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. Regardless, at any point in the next three, four weeks, if, the, if there is a close on a weekly basis above 37.20, there's a real good chance we'll be going testing the highs. Otherwise, it's in this consolidation phase. All right. I, I, I did finish the BTC. I just One other thing I wanted to finish about the BTC is the pattern that we're looking at here is another one of the Chapman Wave techniques that we've had for years and years and years, decades. It's called the falling axe formation. Oh, no. What did I do? Oh. <laughs> All right. Let me get this back. Click. Click, 
click. Get back the trading there. Got that. And get there it is. Okay, I got everything back again. It was a silly mistake. I don't know what it did. Price goes up, 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 up. Then it comes down and makes lower highs and much lower lows. All of a sudden, it stalls and finds some support. It then takes out the upper declining trend line. It's like an expanding cone, declining, expanding cone. And that says you can go all the way back to the previous high. Well, lo and behold, this is the pattern we're looking at. Chapman falling axe formation. It looks like, look, there's the handle. Whoops, there's the handle. And there's the lower highs and much lower lows. And then it suddenly stalls and tries to make a cup formation. Let me draw that in. A little lopsided, it doesn't matter. All right. So how it takes out, if it can. So this is Bitcoin. Uh, this is a continuous contract. But it is already a leg D. That's kind of worked very hard to go from the 54,000 level to the high today of 70,825 way below the high that was made on the left side, that's 73, I think it was 1,000. Not way, but it's below. So it says, how in this the next two weeks, the weekly chart, so let's give it two weeks, how it holds the 65,800 support is important, but if it takes out this area right here, 72,100, maybe 72,200, it says it can test the left side high of the week of the 7th of June, 73,895. So it's doing very well. And this monthly chart says peak, peak C. You've taken one, two, three, four months to consolidate. Somewhere in that fifth month, you should see an attempt at least to make a new all-time high. All right. Cover the chunk of stuff. Let us get to, um, yeah, the XLF. This is the, the financial uh, spider, select financial spider fund. Had a very nice rate to 44.11, peak D again. Pulls back to the 14-period moving average. Has a nice bounce, but a little weak today, down 21 cents, 43.20. I think it's going to digest gains. This is a peak E slash C. I'm going to keep the alternate count. Most of the time, for the last uh, couple of weeks, we've considered that that left side high, March or April highs, Going to the low of April in many of the charts really was a down arrow and an up arrow. And this is actually peak A, peak B, peak C rather than E. We'll see if that's the case, but it is a leg D in the monthly chart. Back in a moment. And we want to be looking at uh, the regional bank. Yes. Basil Chapter Type finished his hour. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. We have a market. Over the past year, the market has been consistent in a strong upward trajectory. But now we're just starting to see signs of volatility. Don't let this volatility scare you. Times like these are when big money can be made. That's why I'm excited to announce a live trading event hosted by yours truly. Join me on Friday, August 2nd at 9 a.m. all the way until noon Eastern Standard Time while I trade the S&P, the Qs, the NDX 100, and I'm going to be trading the one-day options on the S&P as well as the NDX. To make this deal even better, I'm offering one month free of my Market Insight newsletter, which has beaten the market by almost a factor of five this year, in addition to a signed copy of my book, The Art of Timing the Trade. On top of trading the market live, I'll discuss how I plan my trading day, what times I've found to be the best to trade, how I decide to enter and exit trades, and so much more. I can't wait to see all you folks there. 
Make sure you sign up soon so you can get early access to my market insights and secure your spot. Wow! Let's get them, folks. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Schaffman, Tiger Nuisance so House. Because of the, uh, the Tiger dollar sale that's going on right now, let me just mention what I do. So I, every day I give a synopsis of what I'm looking at in terms of the, the Dow, and that's really a benchmark for it, 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 it. I also give parameters for all the other indices, but every day I talk about this closed up uh, powerful plus 654 to 40,589. Then I go on to say what I'm looking at, why we're looking at this, uh, why we've been positive on the Dow for so long. Uh, it's the Dow 30. It's just a mix of the U.S. Uh, key United States of America uh, corporations that seem to be gelling, coming together very nicely. Um, and I just go through exactly what we're looking for. Yeah, I mentioned Triple M really helped as well because it soared high. It was up huge on, on Friday, 20-something percent. I mean, for a Triple M, for 3M company, <laughs> you know, that that's a big deal. Um, and then I go through my uh, right here. You can't see it too well. I made it a little fade, faded. That's my daily uh, newsletter. And that goes through all these different aspects. I give an opening paragraph that gives you an assessment of where we are. But I also look at stocks. And on my weekend show, uh, I do a um, every weekend, usually Friday night or Saturday morning. Uh, this week, it might, oh, this week might be a little difficult. I just might not be able to do it maybe until Sunday. But I do an hour-long overview, and I look at different aspects. I look at all the positions we have, what we're looking at, what we want to buy. So very often, there are stocks that I, I do an analysis for um, for subscribers, and I might not get it. I might say buy here, and because I have fairly tight parameters, uh, we might miss it by a couple of cents sometimes, and then it does fantastic. We've had quite a few of those lately. But some people not like the analysis. They say, I, I, I agree with this. So I'm going to, besides what Basil's saying, I'm going to start my own position. And that helps them a lot. And then they know they have very, very tight parameters. You know, stops are quite tight. If you're right, you just, it's fantastic because it just keeps going. And then you, you have wiggle room, a lot of wiggle room. So it's a pretty comprehensive newsletter. No, I shouldn't say pretty. It's a very comprehensive newsletter looking at different sectors that I think are going to be the winners. We've chosen two that up until now, up until this very moment, have been really good winners, fabulous winners in the selection of, of sectors that have worked. Just lately, I've held off a little bit on the stocks themselves. Rather, we've gone for ETFs because just I needed the cushion. Um, and I think it's it's been working quite nicely, very nicely, actually. So within that context, I just want what I do and I, um, every day I update. I, I have to say that it's, you do have to put a little work in. I do the analysis, but you have to just every day I'll say, okay, these are the parameters that we're watching and this, these are the stops. So it takes a little bit of work. You don't have to, once you're in the position, you can say, hey, I, I've got my stop in place. I don't have to worry about anything. Let it just go. Um, but for traders, there, there's a lot of action going on. 
where we add and, and subtract and whatever it is, or we, we have the three times short like we did for the semiconductors, which worked out very nicely, but it got out to, so we just stopped out to the penny of the low, um, and then it just ran up huge after that, even more than when we had it. So it happens. But in the meantime, I just want to tell you what what I do. It's just, you know you can have you get all my webinars on the rectangle formations, the cup formations, all these different things. Just uh, a dozen or so webinars that you can check out. So it's a very comprehensive look at the markets and look at. I, I try my best as as much as possible for us to have positions that are either very long term or they could be very short term. But we've we've still got our longs from in the Dow from March of 2020. And again, in March, uh, October of 2022, we still have the three times long as well. It's nuts, but it's doubled. So we can't complain. Uh, you should never have a three times long for anything more than a day. So that's what they say. We've had it for a couple of years. Not, no, I mean, it's just, we. I, as an experiment, I said, for those of you interested, we've gone in great. Let's see if we can just hold it. And it'll do its own job. And of course, it shrinks every day, gets recalculated, but it's done very well in terms of doubling. Okay, so I just want to let you know. Now, let me just do a couple of other things right here. I wanted to show you the e, uh, EUR USD. This is the euro dollar currency pairs. Um, look at that big sharp pullback down to the 200 period moving average off the peak E top in the daily, peak D in the weekly, and just really going sideways. It's not breaking down, but it's not breaking out. The USD JPY, that is the euro, sorry, that is the yen dollar currency pay made a peak D. It too is pulling back at two uh, euro, no, at two uh, yen. Um, a peak E in the weekly chart and a leg E in the monthly chart. And the dollar, as I said before, the dollar's it's moving up, and that just says be a little careful here market-wise. There isn't. You remember I spoke about this. My my five, um, the, the metrics, those icons that I use. That's Bondi, uh, Goldie, Crudy, Dolly, and Vixie. That, that's you know bonds, crude oil, dollar, gold, and the volatility index. They haven't worked like they had worked for years. They used to be absolutely. I mean, you just knew that if the uh, dollar was running, go, the uh, crude oil would probably be pulling back and the market might be pulling back and um, the gold would be pulling. None of that has been working the way it used to work. So this is leg B up in the dollar. But in the weekly chart, it says, yeah, it broke the uptrend. I can just take this away. It's used to keep it there. It's, it doesn't do anything. So it broke the um, up the downtrend line because it was very steep. And you remember, my rule of thumb is when you get a very sharp move off a low, then the trend line that starts is usually after that. So this is really the new trend line right here from there. That's the trend line. To do it from here, obviously, it's going to be so sharp, you're going to be taken out. This is a very important trend. That just says the dollar needs to hold 103.50. If it closes on 103.50, that's a problem all, all the way around at least for the currency, but it'll help, should help the gold. So in the meantime, let me just give you an assessment before we go to the final final uh, segment of the, of the show. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, as long as the segments that we have uh, considered very important, which is says that the Dow, let me just do this right now, the Dow has been the leader, the Dow 30. It's stalling from the round number. I, you know, round number is the same point. Round number, round number. What was I looking at a moment ago that had the round number high? Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, ARM, A R M, uh, A R M had a round number high. Oh no, that was the old one, 164 before it had that huge smash to the downside. No, I was looking at something just a moment ago. I wonder if I can find it here. Let me. I think we've already passed it. My list. Uh, Oh, AVOV, maybe. That's it. Yes, AVOV, Aerovironment, Inc., Farm and Military Drone Switchblade. You would think this would be on fire when it was to the 224 round number high, peak D. And look where it tumbled to, tumbled to the 160s of trading at 173 right now. So for subscribers, these are stocks that I'm looking at for the next big phase to the upside. Will it work? So let's just go back. We were looking at the Dow. The Dow had a round number high. It's pulled back from that high. If it can take out 41, 
2017 in time in uh, August. That's going to be fantastic. Uh, but I think until then, it's going to be a sideways move. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman Tiger Technicians out. Dow's down 143. S&P is up two and a half. Divergence. I'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So just to me quickly say that the E-mini trading right now up $1.25 at 5500 that was a significant double top, the 5-minute chart at PD. And the 10 minute chart is a single D's with the same moment of, of action. I'm just saying that's a D in the five minute chart, was also a D in the 10 minute chart, uh, up at the high in the 50, uh, 55, uh, 34 area. And uh, I think that that is the top, maybe for at least into tomorrow, maybe even through Wednesday afternoon. We'll see. But it, I think that we, emotionally, I think that was an oversold level that we've got and now we have to recoup some of that by having a digestive phase so that's number one number two is uh just real quickly you've got apple is that i think it's tomorrow maybe apple uh digesting its gains 237.23 all-time high i think it's it's a pd in the weekly chart i think it's got a little bit of a digestive phase i don't think it's taking 237.23 out very soon uh, amazon made a high of um 201.20 trading at 183. It could bounce, but I don't think it's going to take that high out for the next couple of weeks. It's going to take a little bit of time to digest these gains. 201.20 is the high. Um, looking at Microsoft, I'll do Microsoft tomorrow. The earnings come out, I think, tomorrow after the close. Um, it's 
uh, up a, a dollar. I think it's made as high as 468.50. We are long from 338. We've had a real nice positions long. But most importantly, there's the beak. The beak continued. It has had a really big bounce. We appreciated that. But it's continuing in the beak formation. And that beak formation, if it goes under 416 this week, that's a big problem. It's going to take quite a while to recoup those gains and get back to the highs. It needs a digestive phase. If it has a fabulous move to the upside, it has to hold the 437 area if it can get there in the coming through the, the entire week. So with that said, I'm just saying be a little careful here. We've got the rotation. We've used this rotation to go into certain sectors that we like very much. A great time to be looking at now to individual stocks. We'll be doing that over the next two weeks. Have a great day. Stay tuned for great programming. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call, Day 